Right, welcome to a very special edition of the Killer Downs College Soccer School um, exclusive chats. And this time we're talking with current students and we're talking to, to two very special young ladies who recently had the opportunity of a lifetime to learn something amazing from a guy that's done so much in the community and that's Basha Hawley from the Richmond Tigers Football Club. And Basha's just recently retired from playing AFL. So we thought what a great time to speak to the girls about their experiences um, with the Basha Hawley Foundation. So I welcome Hiba and Aya to the show. How are you girls going this evening? Good. 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 Not bad. Fantastic. Enjoying lockdown? No. <laughs> no. Who is? I know. Well, it does give us one thing we can do, which is we can catch up and talk about this experience, which um, happened before lockdown. It happened, I believe it was the 28th of June to the 1st of July. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want to talk about a little bit about what the experience was like? I guess we'll start with the younger one of the of the two sisters. So Hiba, you can get us started and Aya will fill in the gaps. Well, overall, um I've literally I can remember everything to like it's I can't explain it. Like it's such a unique experience. I remember every single part of it. Like the first day, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna walk out with any friends. And within like the first two hours, we all had inside jokes. And I felt like we've known them forever. And we had like a inside joke and it's like, we're not sisters, we're friends. Oh, we're not friends, we're sisters. And that's what we kept saying throughout the whole four days. And it's like, we learned leadership skills and we all practiced our faith together. That was really good. Fantastic. And what about your experiences, Aya? What was it like um, probably from the first moment that you got there? Well, similar to Hiba, when we, when we first went, we're like, you know, we felt extra. We're like, we don't know anyone. We're not going to make any friends. But literally what he was said we connected in two seconds we just made friends and the whole four days well we just kept thinking we don't want to we don't, we don't want it to end we don't want it to end it and was yeah. supposed to be like a sleepover like we were all supposed to be in hotels in yeah. one room together and we kept saying we have to go back home drive drive here and back yeah okay that's was that due to the COVID that it was um not as yeah. free yeah okay so how did you get about how did you get into this program and what what sort of inspired you to to put in the application? Can I go first? Yeah, whoever. <laughs> um so our dad sent us a link on Facebook and he's like, Oh, you guys should try this out. So we went in. At first I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do this, probably not gonna get in, it's not a big deal. And then we get accepted and we had to like fill out forms, first our details, why we wanted to join. And I wrote like a little sentence, I'm like, this is not a big deal. And then I go over to Aya and she's written a whole paragraph and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get in. And then we got in and we're like, we see what we have to do. We're going to the MCG. We're going to the Islamic Museum of Australia. And it's all this type of stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's actually a big deal. We get to meet Bash Hawley. And it's actually like, I didn't expect it at all. Awesome. What about you, Aya? How was it for you? Yeah, it's the exact same. He sent us the link and I'm like, oh, what is this? Like, you know, Dad always sends us links and stuff. So I didn't see it as much, but I opened it and we, I did my little paragraph of why I wanted to be in there, improve my leadership skills, all that kind of stuff. And they send us this, like, you know, oh, you made it, whatever. And then they send us the timetable and it's all these things. I'm like, whoa, I did not expect that. I literally expected four days of just talking to him and that's it. But yeah, exactly what he said. Fantastic. And, and I saw some of the photos on their Facebook page. And for anyone that's um, going to follow up from this interview, the Basha Hawley Foundation on Facebook has some fantastic programs and different um, photos and videos from all of the things that he's been doing around Australia. Um, what would you say was probably one of your highlights in terms of um, not so much the people you met, because you've already spoken about that a few times, but in terms of what you saw as a person and maybe what you learned during the experience? And we'll start with you, Hipper. Um, what I saw, I'm never going to forget being able to play footy with, it was a few, I think it was Taylor from Richmond. We got to play footy with her on the MCG ground and it was all empty and like they lit up the lights. There was no one in the stadium. It was just a bunch of girls playing footy on the pitch, on the field, sorry. And it was, that that's something I'll never forget, like physically seeing it and taking away from it was, like to never judge girls from how they look because when we first walked in we were told we looked very rude we were told that we were the main girls of the group and then at the end of the at the end of the four days they're like you guys were the nicest girls ever like and same for us we thought oh I'm, I'm not gonna like these girls they look like rude and I'm like oh they end up being like one of our bestest and closest friends to this day still oh, that's interesting that's, that's a really yeah. unique way of taking it and 
playing footy on that on that field, did you were you able to concentrate on the ball? Were you looking at the stands and looking at the lights and all the features of both. the MCG? Both. <laughs> it's hard to do both at the same time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. What about you, Aya? What did you take away from the experience apart from the from the wonderful people that you met? Well, my highlight was we did a lot of activities, but one of my favorites one was this thing called um, Triple H. So <laughs> we share a highlight, a hero, and a hardship in our life. And we sit in the circle and we just express to each other our hardship, our heroes, and like that kind of stuff. And that really made you think like, shit, there's a lot of people with, you know, different things. Like, you know, everyone goes through different struggles. Yeah, that was my favorite thing. Like, you're just seeing everyone's different perspectives of life, you know, not judging people. So that was my favorite. Even the footy thing, like you were saying, being on the pitch, I mean, <laughs> on the um, on the ground and seeing, you know, there was not there's no people, but just how massive how massive it is and how hard it is for some footy players to just with a big crowd play. So all that that was bad. Fantastic, and it sounds like um, that that would have been a really important bonding step for you to do the triple H activity. Did you find that the group got much more connected after that? Very. Yes, definitely. Definitely. That was, yeah, that was incredible. There were some quiet girls. I'm like, oh, they're not going to say anything. And like you say, and they say, and like, we're so surprised. And it just, at the end, yeah. everyone hugs each other and just brings you so much closer. Yeah. We're so, like, you're much more alike to people than you think. Much more. Yeah. A lot of similarities that you found, yeah, between each other. Yeah. yeah. And how many girls were there roughly that were lucky enough to be part of the program this time around? Was it 23? Well, yeah, around 24, 23 girls. Okay. And what were your experiences with um, with Basha himself? And what, what are some of the things that you took from him as an elite sports person? And you both are active soccer players um, and, and have played sport for a long time. What did you learn from him that you can take into your life moving forward? He he joined in that Triple H thing, so he he was the first to introduce it. And he's like, "If you girls are okay with me saying it to help you guys get a head start," and that was that was like really thoughtful of him. And he started saying it, yeah. and he he told us his whole life story and his personal things. I'm like, like I can't believe I'm actually doing this with him. And like you realize, it's not like he's such a humble person. Like it's not he didn't see himself as like I'm a celebrity. I'm not gonna like you guys are nothing. Like he was really like in it. Like yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, what about you, Aya? What was the experience like for you when when you um, listened to him speak? Yeah, he's he's a very very humble man. He's like when you talk to him, it's like yeah, it's like what he said. He's not something like he doesn't see himself as like different from everyone else because of what he is and a footy player. He literally talks to you like you've known him for years, and he's very humble. He he doesn't talk down on you. He looks you in the eye, con eye contact, everything. So he's a very good man. Very good. Fantastic. What an experience. And um, you mentioned that you got to see some other sites. What are some of the other things that you got to see during those three days that you were there? I think what was the first thing? Well, we met every day at the Islamic Museum of Australia. And I, knew, I didn't even know that would exist. It's like a little, it's like hidden in a wall or something. It's like camouflaged into the buildings. And we meet that we meet there every morning, except for one of the days we met in the MCG and they gave us a tour of the insides. We got to sit on the spaces where like only the members got to sit and stuff. And they took us on a tour. We got to see like there was there was like a seat of cushions, and only members could sit there. We got to sit there. And we just sat there for like two minutes. Like I'm never getting up because I'm never going to sit here again. Yeah, that was so, so comfortable. Yeah, there was that the MCG, and there was one more place. Where no, we, we went to we went to Boss Fitness. They took us to um to do hit classes nearly every day. They made sure we were and active. That, there was that thing, the one under the. It was in the MCG. What else did we say? When we went in with the, we had wristbands in. And that oh, we, pen. um, the sports museum. The, was it sports museum? Yeah, it was a sports yes, museum. Yes, uh, the interactive yeah. one where you can do the, um, like, surfing and yes. those exercises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah like, yes, wristbands yes. and, like, pens to interact with everything. Okay, yeah, and that how, was that, really cool. how was that as an experience? That was really cool. I didn't know that existed either. Okay. Yeah, there was, like, so many... There was soccer, there was footy, there was tennis. There's all these like physical interactives. And we had this wristband and you just touch it on and you just, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know it existed. It was pretty cool. Awesome. Now let's go back to the Islamic Museum of Australia. And you, you know, you said that you didn't know that it existed before. What are some of the interesting things that you found out about um, Islamic people in Australia? Uh, they, there was a, 
when she held the tour, this lady, and she showed us paintings, and she she actually has one of her paintings up there as well, and like each painting had a story behind them, and there was a there's someone on the shark, the show, the shark, and he had a painting of him on there. I forgot what it was, but he like there's some a lot of famous people in there that you didn't know were even Muslim, and they had like their own paintings and their own stories, and they're like footies with like Aboriginal or I think it was Aboriginal designs on them and stuff. Nice. What about you, Aya? What did you What did you learn about um, your culture and your and your um, religion that you didn't maybe know before in terms of what it's done in Australia and what people have achieved? Well, we live in a in our area. There's not much. Well, personally, there's not much um, Muslim people around the area. You know, in the school, or anything. So when we went to that area and like like what he said, we didn't even know that museum existed. Um, you just see like so many different like so many different people, so many, but they all share the same faith. And it just made me feel like there is a lot of us like around, like it's actually, like it made me feel more home. It made me feel like, you know, here we might not have as many Muslims around us. We might not feel always, um, how do I say this? We may not feel connected to everyone spiritually or like, you know, with our faith. But as soon as I got there and I saw everything, like, you know, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we're missing out on just because of the area that we're living in. And, you know, we learned about a lot about our prophets. We learned about um, the Quran, the, bo the book. Um, yeah, we've seen a lot of things. It was amazing. Fantastic. Sounds like something you'll never forget. And you can obviously take it forward and, and educate your little brother about it and your family as well. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Awesome. So in, in, in summarizing, what was your absolute top moment of the whole experience, Hiba? So it's a tough mm -hmm. one. So you might... If, if you're still thinking, yeah. Aya can go first because I think she might have an answer. But um, <laughs> what are your thoughts? No, Who wants uh, to go first? There's a lot. Yeah, there is a lot. There, there's a lot. But um, this this may not be physically when we were there, but for me, that whole experience, everything that we did there, bring me closer to my to my religion. It bring me closer to how I see the world. You know what I want to do in the future and um, you know, it brings me closer to wearing the hijab because I never wore this. And, you know, being around people that did wear it and it just made me feel like, you know, I really do want to wear it now. I want to show people, I don't want to show people, but, you know, I want to appear like I am Muslim. It is who I am. And I'm not, I'm like before I was, I wasn't ashamed. I wasn't, I was never ashamed of being Muslim, but I, I wasn't confident as much as I was now. So, you know, now that I went there and I seen, so many people that share the exact same values, same morals, same faith. We believe in the same things. I'm like, wow, like this is actually a really big thing. Like I want to put this on, you know, I'm confident in who I am. I've done it for a massive reason. And yeah, that, that was a very emotional part of that, the whole program that helped me wear it and everything. But um, yeah, that's it. It was everything. That's fantastic. What about you, Hiba? I agree with what she said. Like, my favorite part was like meeting all these girls, being close to your faith. We got to, um, if I was going to put like specifically my top two favorite things, we got to pray with Basha and he like led the prayer for us. That was really cool. And it was like, we had an open window and we were just praying towards the MCG as well. And the second part was just meeting him and like being able to like, he realized like, I know he's a normal person, but like, I thought he, he wouldn't be as humble as he was. I've heard he was humble, but he was extremely humble. Yeah, so humble. Oh my god. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, and do you think now moving forward, obviously he's not going to be playing um, professional sport anymore. But I believe that his foundation has just grown from from 2013 when he started it. Um, do you think that there's a lot more that will be done by him in the community moving forward, especially with young girls that that love their sport? Definitely. 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 He loves it. He even when he talked to him, his passion for just helping out community and everyone is just amazing uh, he, he was definitely he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to come one of the days but he was he came just before one of his training sessions with richmond he's like you could tell like he made time for us out of the day he's like okay i have a training session but i'm going to come beforehand to talk to these girls and then i'm going to go yeah he's very dedicated to what he loves fantastic so it sounds like um his values rubbed off on you and and probably something that you can take into your into your life moving forward yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, girls, for sharing that fantastic story with us. And 
I'm sure many students from our program um, of the Islamic faith and of any, any faith will take a lot from that and, um, and appreciate learning from what you've experienced. So thank you so much for that. Thank no you for having us.